Okay, so um, I think we've covered the selection part. Uh, say, I mean, obviously there's so much we can yes. talk about selection, but we, uh, we're just gonna put things on people's radar screen. Yes. So um, yeah, can I add thing selection. about selection, just as a, a general advice for, to people? So, you know, if you're in certain industries, let's say natural food or certain industries that really require a distributor, there's the problem you run into is you have to sell to this distributor. And then these distributors, they're pretty dirty. They will sell directly to Amazon. They will sell to whoever. And it's almost once they do that, it's very hard to identify where the product's coming from, who it went through, how it got to the end consumer. A lot of times you'll have to buy units of your own product to identify this. So one thing that we always recommend to our clients and to anybody, I recommend this to anybody on Amazon who's has to use a distributor and has something like a consumable-ish type product mm -hmm. is to create a unique to Amazon offer that you don't sell to anybody. You never sell this product to anybody. It will, it should be, let's say, you know, let's say you have six packs and people are doing a single six pack and two six packs. So like, you know, 12, you know, maybe you offer a 12 pack, but at the cost of 10. You know, so it's slightly better value for customers. It's a unique UPC that you do not sell to anybody, nobody, nobody gets it. And then you control that offer on Amazon. And what will happen over time, if you fast forward months, is that you have a better value item and assuming your quality is good, assuming good quality, you have a better value item, you consumers will find it. And then you can start marketing to that item and you don't sell it to anybody else. So you never get undercut. And then when we talked about all those other offers, you know, like the, the value offers, that's when you can have these third-party sellers or whoever kind of come into your offer, create noise and distraction for your competitors and pricing variations for your competitors. But then when consumers come, they will identify because, you know, they, a lot of people can do math that your offer is the best. It's the highest value offer. And then that's where you convert them. So it's almost like you use everybody else's energy and work to draw attention back to your prime little offer that you don't give to anybody else. And I just want to leave that with everybody because it's that's probably the best way to balance getting into brick and mortar and really working with large distributors, but protecting your profitability, protecting you know your, your brand on Amazon. Well, this is such an important point. And I will give you a real life experience, which uh, has happened very recently uh, with one of my clients. Mm -hmm. um, Going back a few years, I had a um, I had a client, and um, the the product they sold they primarily did they're a manufacturer, and they sold to large chains, mm. uh, yeah. large cha uh, chains like yep. Lowe's, Home Depot, and others. Yeah. Um, so they said, "Oh, we also want to sell direct to consumers." So when they went on Amazon, they did not want to compete. Okay. with their distributors or these right. retailers. Right. So what they did, and they did this, by the way, totally as a, not as a strategy, but as a creative thinking. Yeah. So to speak. They created bundles. Hmm. Okay. Yes. So just so you have an idea, the item that they sold, uh, the, the single item uh, was sold for um, something like thirty four ninety five, and the bundle was about forty five dollars. Yep. Uh, or for forty five or forty nine ninety five. Yep. So anyway, fast forward three years, the company was completely mismanaged and they overstocked because their sales spiked. And uh, I'm not going to say what the item was, but it was one of those pandemic-driven items. Okay. And the leadership had no idea this was going to be temporary. They kind of got their uh, heads in the clouds and kept buying, kept buying, kept buying. Well, guess what happens? The bottom falls out right. and the orders dry out. Now they are stuck with millions of dollars of inventory. Mm. Guess who else is stuck with? A lot of inventory. They are distributors, right? So now the distributors started dumping. Yes, yes. And and by the way, they also uh, had gone on Amazon by uh, selling the single items at that mm -hmm. point because the greed yes. 
captain. They did not yeah. maintain the discipline. And they said, okay, we are also going to sell. So yeah. now they are selling on, on Amazon, the single item that's supposed to be $34.95. And uh, their bundles were still selling $45. Yeah. And when the distributors started dumping, yeah. the item price went from $34 to six seven dollars oh. oh my gosh that's horrible they added insult to injury and they started competing with those resellers oh my gosh yeah so it was a nightmare yeah anyway nightmare. Uh, the good news is the situation is resolved we've taken control but the point of the the example is this throughout this for them it was an Armageddon. <laughs> Yeah, the, this crisis. Yeah, the bundle sales were steady. Oh, they were okay. steady. Yeah, they had to, they had to reduce the price a little bit, but not much. Right, because I mean, let's face it: supply and demand. Right. Demand goes down. There's yeah. more supply. The price will automatically need to be reduced right. a little bit, but but not not like from thirty four ninety five to seven dollars. They went from. Yeah. $45 to something like $39, something like that. But the bundles kept selling throughout yeah. this time. So uh, making these Amazon uh, only offers definitely is a good strategy, uh, whether you're dealing with resellers or these price cutters or whatever. Um, and, and by the way, you also want to stay on top of your distribution agreement so yes. that not everybody ends up selling on Amazon. Right. So um, uh, again, it's a bit of a side thing, but what I what I always recommend is when you have distributors, yep. you have to put in your distribution agreement that resale re, uh, yes. resellers, if they will sell online, need to be approved. Yes, totally. So and otherwise, write... they will be considered uh, unauthorized, right. and therefore the products that they sell will be will not be considered authentic and they'll be right. reported to Amazon. That's how, right. that's what I recommend. What do you think? So we do exactly that. 